Recording in progress. I'd like to call the Tuesday, November 16th, meeting of the St. Joseph County Board of Commissioners to order. Please stand for the pledge. First item on the agenda, opening and reading of bids. It appears there are none, so we will move on to the reports and requests from the Board of Commissioners. First item is the accounts payable docket. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote. Aye. <laughs> Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. And Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Second. All right, motion passes. Next, move on to business of the month. I think there is, uh, they were unable to be here today, so we will put that off for another, uh, another meeting. Oh, really? Okay. Next, we move on to citizen of the month is... Ethan? Yes, yes. There he is. Oh, yeah. Hi. Come on up, Mr. Hunt. Yeah. Ethan Hunt. Ethan Hunt is from Mishawaka, and he created the International Soccer Academy of America. This school, the ISAA, was the thesis for his master's degree from Spain. It is the first high school for soccer players in the United States, and it is in Mishawaka. These soccer academies are very common in other countries. I am very impressed that this high school offers up to 90% financial aid, completely based off income so all students can afford it. This ISAA school is going to make Michiana a prime candidate for soccer talent all around the world. They now are playing only college teams, allowing students to get recruited to play in college. Hi, Ethan. Please speak and then you will receive your plaque. Well, thank you, and I just wanna say a few thank yous. Um, obviously, I'm, I was very humbled when I found out about this last week, and um, the first people I told were my teachers, and they were ecstatic. So, first of all, I just wanna thank the county commissioners, Commissioner Cassiani, Commissioner Dieter, and Commissioner Fleming. Again, I'm very humbled by this, and um, just very honored. Um, I'd also like to thank my mom, who's here. Um, my mom was 15 when she had me, so she had a lot of choices to make, and she made the right one, and she raised me. And Mom, thank you so much. Um, I'd also just like to thank God. Without God, the school wouldn't exist and um, wouldn't be able to impact as many people as we are. 92% um, of our kids are Hispanic, and um, these are kids that you know were at risk of dropping out, and many of them are here today, and they have said that ISA has helped change their life, and so that is extremely humbling, and um, just very grateful for that. Um, I also want to thank my teaching staff, who's here as well. Um, I don't know if they've come in yet. Are the teachers here yet? No. Well, our teachers are amazing, and, um, and without them, the, the school wouldn't uh, be in existence. And um, um, so I just want to th uh, thank the teachers. Um, I want to thank uh, Villarreal in Spain, who's, who's partnered with us and allowed three of our students to be able to go to Spain starting this weekend to try out for the professional team in Spain. Um, and the last person I want to thank, and they just walked in, our teachers. Um, So uh, Ms. Sandra Ponce de Leon, Mr. Rob Carrasco, and Mr. Kerry Davis, they've been fantastic. And, and Mr. Uh, Carrasco, if you would raise your hand real quick. Mr. Carrasco, uh, Rob, went into sudden cardiac arrest six weeks ago in the classroom. And um, by the grace of God, um, I was walking in from lunch break that moment and performed CPR. Um, and uh, sudden cardiac arrest out of the hospital is about a 5% chance that you, that you live and don't have permanent brain damage. And I'm happy to report that not only did he serve, yeah, <laughs> not only did he uh, survive the CPR, he has no brain damage, and um, 
he is, is doing very well. Broken ribs, broken sternum, but he was back within a couple of weeks, and um, that's all by the grace of God. So I just want to thank the county commissioners and thank my awesome staff and kids. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you. So, before, we, before we bring Ethan up, I just want to say a couple words. I remember back a few years ago when you were in the same youth leadership class as my daughter, Maddie. Um, we had just great conversations then. It's amazing to see what you have done. And you had a dream of starting this high school years ago. And most people don't have the ability to make their dreams come true. But so you not only made your dream come true, but in doing so, you made the dreams of others come true as well. So we cannot thank you and applaud you enough for the great work that you do. And I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Right. And I'm thankful that you saved his life. Thankful. So why don't you come up, take a picture. If any of uh, anyone from the school would like to come up too, we can get a nice group shot. All right, now we move on to the Youth of the Month. Commissioner Fleming. Right. Our Youth of the Month for October, from October is the Marion Girls ISAA Class 2A soccer team. This season, they allowed only 12 goals in 23 games and recorded 15 shutouts. Congratulations on a fantastic season. I believe we have some members on the team on our Zoom call today. You, there you are. Hi. Congratulations on all you did. Yay. And I really like girls being in sports. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if, if uh, our friends at Marion have the ability to speak. I'm not sure if you've got a microphone. Are there anything, any things you'd like to say or any comments you'd like to make? Uh, I'm Steve Rabat. I'm the athletic director at Marion High School. And uh, we have with us our uh, girls state soccer team. And uh, just like to congratulate them on a great year and uh, making Marion proud. And uh, I'm gonna turn it over to coach uh, Henry Boo. To say a couple words. Great. Uh, we want to thank the uh, county commissioners for the honor of being the youth award. Um, we hope you represented our county proud in the state final, and we hope to be back next year. Thank you. Thank you. Best thank wishes. You. Best wishes. Well, can they see it? Here it is. Can you guys see this? Your we award? can. Commissioner Fleming will make sure she gets it over to you and, and get a nice picture, but. Uh, just thank you so much for representing South Bend, the Mishawaka area, for you know, just your leadership. Um, it, getting to the state championship game is no small task, so thanks for all the great, uh, the hard work and the lifetime commitment that you've made. Thank you. All right. 
I should have said this before, this is one of the best things we get to do each month, um, is, is recognize the people that do great things in our community and, and lift our community up. So it's great that we can, um, that we can applaud them. All right, moving on to bills passed by the St. Joseph County Council at a public hearing held on November 9th, 2021. County Council took the following action. Bill 12221 became Ordinance 10321, um, amending salaries for Superior Court. Bill 12121, Ordinance 10421, and Bill 12521, Ordinance 10521, amending salaries for the Health Department. Bill 10921, Ordinance 10621, the monthly transfer and appropriation. Bill 11421, Ordinance 11221, um, compensation and discussions for the FOP, Lodge number 155. And finally, Bill 7621, Ordinance 7921, establishing the PSAP Executive Board and making changes to that. Any questions or comments regarding from the board on any of these items? I think unless anyone has other thoughts, we can just take this in one action. So is there a motion? There's a motion to approve these ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Dieter, how do Aye. you vote? Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. The uh, uh, resolution passes. Thank you. Moving on to Superior Court. Request approval to apply for grant funds through the Indiana Supreme Court Division of State Court Administration to offset the cost of certified court interpreter services. Your honor. Good morning. Uh, President Castelny, Commissioner Dieter, Commissioner Fleming, uh, Liz Hurley, Chief Judge of the St. Joseph Superior Court. Uh, I'm writing, or we're requesting approval to submit application for the Certified Court Administrator Grant available for 2022 uh, through the Division of State Court Administration. The grant does not require matching funds from the county and would greatly offset the cost to the county since interpreters are typically paid out of the county's mandate fund when no grant money is requested or received. Uh, the county courts, and, and this is a grant that is not just for superior court, it's for circuit court and probate court as well. Uh, all three courts are uh, part of that grant application. Uh, last year we were awarded a total of $18,556.10 to use for certified interpreters. Uh, the money provides the opportunity for our courts to set procedures for the provision of high quality, meaningful language access to all limited English proficient and deaf and hard of hearing individuals accessing our courts and all of its services. So we're seeking approval to apply for this grant again. Any questions or comments for Judge Hurley? Sure, is, is this just an interpreter that does all this or? The um, Division of State Court Administration has certified court interpreters uh, for various different languages and then deaf and hard of hearing uh, as well. And so when we uh, utilize under the terms and conditions of the grant, uh, we utilize then their certified interpreters. We can use language line for smaller mm -hmm. hearings uh, that aren't <coughs> addressing, I guess, as weighty of matters, but things like guilty pleas, trials, jury selection, things like that, we need to use the certified court interpreters. Okay, so it's just not limited to, to Spanish, it's no, you know, it's the plethora of correct. ethnicities they have, to... They have a list uh, of certified interpreters for many, many, many languages. Okay, cool, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? There's a motion to approve to apply for the grant funds through the Indiana Supreme Court. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, <coughs> Commissioner Dieter, how do you Aye. vote? Commissioner uh, Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, motion carries. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hope Good you take it you. easy on your newest judge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Roll time. But not, not too easy. All right, moving on to infrastructure planning and growth. First item is the consent agenda. There is improvements, performance, bond, the haven. Any questions or comments regarding this? Is there a motion? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carries. 
All right, for all you folks here for the infrastructure planning and growth portion of the agenda, it's time to get going. All right, first item, request approval of RNS 92101D, Maintenance Asphalt Overlay CCMG Program Change Order Number 1. Mr. Sky. Sky Matters, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, with offices on the 7th and 11th floor of this building. Uh, what you have here is a change order in the amount of $15,918.70. Uh, we had some unforeseen changes uh, going through construction with some pipes, and we also did some additional work um, out on Quince Road to uh, make that project uh, go a little bit better. Uh, this increase is 0.59% uh, of the original contract amount. This is for our Community Crossings Matching Grant Program for 2021. Questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve this change order. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. The motion carries. Next. Request approval of a professional engineering and construction inspection services agreement for the rehabilitation of bridge number 53 and bridge number 211 with Lawson Fisher Associates. Yeah. Items number uh, C through F were approved, were, uh, um, projects that we awarded earlier in the year and what these are just getting the agreements uh, in place for those projects item C is the agreement for with Lawson Fisher Associates to do the uh, design and construction inspection for bridge number 53 which is Kern Road over Rogers Ditch and bridge number 211 which is Angela Boulevard over the St. Joseph River uh, this work uh, will be performed in a not to exceed for not to exceed amount of 332 thousand eight hundred dollars we have reviewed uh, the fees and this will come from the major cum bridge fund and uh, we've reviewed this and recommend your approval if you would like sky just to run through these those four yes. items we'll vote independently on them but that way because they all are kind of in the same vein okay yes okay so then the the next item item d is for the rehabilitation of bridge number 215 colfax avenue make sure i didn't get Things, yeah, Colfax Avenue over the St. Joseph River and bridge number 302, which is Portage Avenue over the toll road. And that con that agreement is with DLZ of Indiana for uh, not to exceed, for construction inspection and design for not to exceed amount of $791,200. The next item, item E, is the agreement with American Structure Point for the design and construction inspection for the rehab of bridge number 208, which is a sample street over the St. Joseph River. Um, this, con this agreement is for work to be formed for not to exceed amount of $226,525. And then the final item there, I item F, if I haven't gotten out of order there, item F is the agreement with the Lock Mueller Group for bridge number 214, which is Otten Road over the St. Joseph River, and bridge number 301, which is the Main Street, which Main Street Bridge over the Toll Road. And this work is uh, set to be performed for not to exceed amount of $646,450, and that also includes uh, design of both of those and construction inspection for both of those structures. Thank you, Sky. I wanna give you my thanks for, you know, kind of right up almost the first day of the job is trying to process these bridges but thank you so much for being able to keep local firms busy and also taking care of our much needed infrastructure improvements so thank you for that any questions or comments from the board absolutely uh what are y'all doing on the angela bridge the angela bridge right now it looks like it may be some patching and uh um some work on the deck itself bridge deck itself Okay. Nothing else beyond maybe the bridge deck, and we're not going to, don't, don't intend to do anything underneath as far as I know. There might be some removal of some debris, but nothing major with the piers. It's mainly okay. just the superstructure. And then the portage bridge? The portage bridge, if I believe, that's, that's going to be a, a pretty, uh, there'll be more work on the portage bridge than there will be the Angela Bridge, if I recall. That's uh, going to be a lot of work on the superstructure. Okay. Well, let me yeah. back, like, with all these bridges at any point, or is it going to be one lane or closed or? Um, it, th yes. Uh, we're going to have, uh, there will be different uh, traffic uh, 
maintenance of traffic schemes for each. Angela, I, uh, that one's more or less probably gonna be closed for the duration of that project, and we'll have to coordinate with the cities um, and other projects that we have going on so we don't close too many in one spot. Um, Portage, if I recall, I, I think we were looking at doing a, we were looking at doing a, a partial a closure, maybe closing a lane, if I recall. Well, like, Sky, with it's all these, uh, is this going to be something you're going to do now, or are you going to be spring, or? What, the, the design of these will get started right away. Okay. What we plan to do is spread the construction out to fit the, uh, the revenue that we'll be getting from uh, the Major Team Bridge Fund, and also so we're not doing all these bridges at once and closing down a lot of roads and affecting the public, traveling public yeah, too much at one time. Shut down Angela and Portage at the same time, or that'd be a, a mess. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at that, and we'll also coordinate with the city on any projects, cities on any projects that they have going on, so we're not causing too much of a, a disturbance. Okay. And last, is it we or the count or the state um, for the maintenance of the Michigan Street Bridge, specifically the lights, which are full of muck and bugs and stuff? That that is the state, and okay. I've been trying to call to get to get a hold of the right person to get that taken care of. Apparently, I haven't gotten the right person yet. Who was, should I call? I'll, I'll get you a name. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I've called a couple different people, and apparently they're, neither one of those was the right one. <laughs> I have no further questions at this time. There are no more questions or comments. No, just thank you for getting this done. Okay. Just comment. Yeah. And It'll we'll be tackle a good these one at a time. The for, uh, item C, is there a motion? There is a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Item D. Is there a motion? There is a motion to approve this. Second. A motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Is there a motion on item E? There's a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Motion is approved. Is there a motion for item F? Motion to approve. Second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, yeah. how do you vote? Aye. It's good to get him done. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Approved as well. Moving on to request approval of a professional service proposal for county engineering standards project with Evan Marsh Consultants. Good morning, Bill Shalio, Economic Development Director, part of the Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth with offices on the 7th and 11th floor. Before you today is a professional, prof professional service proposal from Evan Marsh Consulting to assist the county in developing new county engineering standards. County engineering standards uh, stretch from the 1970s to the current days. We have a whole series of standards that need to be updated. This proposal before you today will do that, will address those, and will bring us into to modern day uh, uh, standards and, and update our technology and everything associated with this. The total work scope is $100,000, uh, not to exceed $100,000. We're splitting the work between $50,000 committed by the Redevelopment Commission and $50,000 committed by the engineering funds. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission approved the $50,000, not to exceed $50,000 at its meeting on November 9th, and so staff would request your approval of the total proposal. Any questions? Sky will be happy to answer them. I know we've had th these conversations before. I mean, why don't we internalize this and do it in-house, but, you know, the issue that we have is, uh, you know, Sky has been short-staffed since we, so we just do not have the internal capacity to do this, so it makes sense to hire a professional who does this and then uh, we think it'll certainly be a more viable method of making this happen. Any questions or comments? Yes, sir. What was the uh, vote of the redevelopment? Was that unanimous? Four, four to zero, yeah. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. And, Bill, will this coincide with our, our master plan for the county on... Certainly, yeah, they'll weave together. So this is one of the many pieces. Probably the third piece that we have not yet gone out for work for is a zoning ordinance update. So this will this is kind of the second of, of those three pieces uh, that will all need to be done as part of that county comprehensive plan. Okay, and then we're I guess at some point there'll be some public input on this, or it's just in house first, or yeah, the, the way that we've set set this up is that the plan would be to 
you know, get everything together that we feel needs to be addressed internally, and then we plan to have meetings with both the development community and the consulting community, and then also to put the standards and draft standards and, and specifications online for any public comment that we may get then. But it, we want to definitely get the input from the development community, the contractors, and also the design community, because they're the ones that are working with it a lot. And, and uh, so, so we definitely are going to have separate meetings with those entities and then online for public comment. Okay. So public comment will be only online. There won't be a public... We, we can have a public meeting. It's just oh, when it comes just, to the design standards. Just for standards, public input. Yeah, public I'm, input. I'm yeah. More, okay. When it comes to design standards, the public doesn't work with it as much, but, I, I mean, we can have one of those meetings. Gotcha. Just, Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I just want to say that I'm glad that we're going to be updating our county engineering standards. So thank you for touching base with me on that. Appreciate it. If there are no further questions or comments, is there a motion? A motion to approve updating our county engineering standards. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passes. Moving request on to request approval of a professional service proposal for Bendix Wood CP lateral connection agreement with Choice Light. Good morning, Commissioners. Chris Brown with the Department of Infrastructure Planning Growth, offices of um, the 7th and 11th floors of this building. Before you is a professional service proposal uh, from Choice Light to connect uh, the Bendix Woods main building to the uh, State Road 2, kind of the EDA broadband expansion backbone uh, fiber. And so because of the pandemic, they have tried to do some more online courses and demonstrations. And with their connection right now, I think it's still a dial-up. So connecting them into fiber would enhance those offerings greatly. So uh, the, the construction is basically just the fiber from the backbone to the main building. I would say that St. Joseph County IT will uh, have all the expenses to connect it into the county loop. So this is just the construction of that fiber and connecting into the main building. Full scope of work is included. Uh, this would be at a total cost of $14,075. The Redevelopment Commission heard this on, at their November 9th meeting and approved it. Uh, staff requests your favorable approval of this professional service proposal. Happy to answer any questions. Well, thanks, Chris. I think it's a great idea to further enhance um, the presence at Bendix Woods, so anything we can do to, to improve that. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Yes, there is. Um, on, on your map here, you've got the proposed for Bendix Woods and then not part of the proposal for Navistar. Why is that on here? Um, so there was discussion uh, with Navistar about possibly bringing in uh, the line in a joint fashion, so along uh, that main entrance on Navistar. We just have not been able to get Navistar to move on where they would want the line. Uh, okay. So at this point, we want to move forward with Bendix Woods. We don't want to delay that construction. And then we are in discussion with Choice Light and Navistar to figure out the best avenue for connecting their buildings. So if, if Navistar would want that, they would pay for it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve the professional service proposal for Bendix Woods CP lateral connection agreement with Choice Light. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Motion is approved. And now we have three requests for a professional service proposal. I think, Council, we should probably just hear each of these separate, or what is your recommendation? I would go through them separately. Okay. So the first is. Uh, Professional Service Proposal for 2022 Legal Services with Thorne Grotnick, LLP. So, Bill Shalio, Economic Development. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission heard this item at their meeting on the 9th and approved it. Uh, yearly, we go out for professional services for legal, financial, and other services. Uh, this service is with Thorne Grotnick, LLP. For legal services for the year 2022, uh, the fees would be based on an hourly basis and the rate to the staff members is included in the agreement. These uh, rates are similar to the rates of previous years and we'd ask for your approval. Questions or comments? Is there a motion? Motion to approve these professional service proposals with legal services with Thorne Grodnick, LLP. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passes. 
Next, request approval of professional service proposal for 2022 financial services with Senator Dalton. So this is the financial services proposal with Senator Dalton. Uh, this would also be based on an hourly rate, uh, and we would ask for your approval. The Redevelopment Commission approved this at their meeting on November 9th. Questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve the financial services with Senator Dalton. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castellani, how do you vote? Aye. Motion is approved. Next, request approval of a professional service proposal for 2022-2024 Chamber Services with South Bend Regional Chamber. So again, uh, the, the third service proposal before you today is with the South Bend Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they provide us a variety of economic development and membership related services. Uh, in the past couple of years, they've served as our, our COVID uh, organizer. They've served as our agent for, for grants and for other programs related to uh, the restaurant grant that the county had offered. So provide us a number of services. Uh, the Redevelopment Commission heard this also at their meeting on November 9th. The staff would request your approval. The contract amount is in the amount of $105,000 per year. Uh, beginning January 1st, uh, 2020, and this would be a three-year contract. We'd come back, and, and with this approval today, this would approve us for the next three years, 2022, 2023, 2024. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, and just note that this is the, the agreement that we worked with council. They, this is their preferred funding mechanism for this service, so that's why um, it's done in this fashion. Any questions or comments? Yes, there is. And in the past, have we had a three-year contract? It is. This is the second three-year contract that we have done. And what was that amount? Uh, 65000 per year. So this is an increase from the past years. So why did this go up by a lot? A lot. A uh, large part of that is lead response. So this year, the, to this point in the year, the Chamber has responded to 62 state leads or other leads brought to us. Uh, they provided services on grants. They provided us other services. So again, they gave you lead? How many leads? So we've had 62 leads from the state that we've responded to that the chamber has responded to uh, for different sites within the county. How do you define a lead? So the state has a, a, a site selector that contacts the state. Those leads come from the state to the different LEDOs, the lead economic development organizations. Uh, we take a look at the proposal, determine if it's something we want to respond to. If it is, the chamber has a certain deadline to respond to that. Uh, and then the, the lead goes to the state uh, for its review and, and consideration. Okay. And out of those 62 leads, how many turned out to be something good for St. Joe County? So at this point in time, uh, electronic or electric last mile solutions was one of those leads that came through the state. So, so far that's been a, a real win for us. Um, we have others that are in various stages of review. We've had a couple of site visits this past year. We've had a couple of uh, uh, second round, third round visits. Uh, so I, at this point in time, that site selection process is a, is a complicated bowl of soup, but it's, uh, we're still working through the process with several entities. I'm, I'm just trying to formulate like a over 100% increase of that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's all I have at this time. I think this has been, I guess, hopefully when you all review your, your office and all that, that, that could be done in-house. Um, I think that's a lot of money going out for leads. That I'm sure we have a lot of competent people in our building that could look at leads and, and find all that stuff. So... That's my kind of issue with that of, you know, locked into 300,000 over three years is uh, going up a lot on what it previously was. Well, thanks, Bill. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? I will note that one of the issues we did um, look to expand the workforce in economic development and, and the decision was made to not to do that. So this is one of the byproducts of Having a rarely lean economic development staff of two people um, that, if, if you look at our it's, it's a peer cities and other counties, I mean, we are woefully understaffed. So what the result of that is, then we need to outsource some of these functions because we still need to be competitive with the things that we do. So this is the byproduct of, of that. Is there a motion? There is a motion to approve, uh, for the chamber services with South Bend Regional Chamber. I will reluctantly second it. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. 
Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelli, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passes. Request, next, uh, request approval of a professional service proposal for the Capitol Avenue Corridor Riviera Drive Lincoln Way East segment with Christopher B. Burke Engineering. So over the last couple of years, we've been working with uh, a variety of partners, City of Mishawaka, the state, um, the Parks Department of Mishawaka, Parks Department of the County, others as we look at the potential to expand and develop a, a Capitol Avenue Trail Corridor. Uh, one of the pieces that we're here to, to ask for your approval for is additional study on the, the trail segment that would connect uh, the Lincoln Way East neighborhoods into Capitol Avenue there at Lincoln Way, Riviera Drive in that area. Uh, back earlier this summer, we had a neighborhood meeting, um, got a lot of good feedback, but as part of that, we needed to do some additional work and scoping. So uh, we've got some additional design work here. This will get us ready to be bid ready uh, as we do this work. The amount is is 29,500. Commission approved this at their last meeting. I would note that this project is listed as one of the, the ready grants. It's in the ready grant packet. So we're trying to get this. Uh, we've got the two other elements uh, that are part of the missing trails project uh, that are ready to go. So we just need to finish this one up. So if we were ready eligible, uh, we would be bid ready and be able to go. So any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Are there in fact any questions or comments? Sure. Is, is City of Mishawaka put anything into this, any matching, assisting, helping? So what, what we're doing, uh, kind of the agreement to this point in time, is we'll do the design at a point in time when we're ready to go to construction. The city had partner with us. Uh, we've got electric lights that need to be moved. We've got some other street work that needs to be done on the Lincoln Way segments, uh, some sidewalk improvements on connections. So City of Mishawaka, we haven't committed to a funding because we don't have a, a bid ready or a, a total bid scope uh, ready to go, but the City of Mishawaka has committed to be a partner with us on this. Okay. So. Is this more going north south or y'all going east west so this is this is going west from capital west into those okay. neighborhoods we've got so a separate project that we're looking to go east the, the new okay. dunkin donuts and so at the end of the area. day would this theoretically be able to hook up with east race everything that, the path yep. that goes that way up into yeah so the as, as mishawaka one of one of their ready grant applications is as they look to continue the river trail system that they have that's already at Merrifield Park, it would continue east to the golf course. And then as, as that loop gets built, this piece would be an integral part of that loop, which ultimately connects into the South Bend system and then all the way up through the county system into, into Michigan. So theoretically, you could jump on your bike there and soon ride all the way up to St. Joe, Michigan, right? Certainly, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Ultimately, somebody could, it wouldn't See be there, me. Man. But... Thank you, sir, appreciate it, good yep. job. want to say thank you too because as you know that's I grew up in that area before there was even Capitol Avenue Bridge and so now I'm glad that we can have the sidewalk there so it's safer for people to get down there and, and that's a nice area I like that so thank you so much appreciate it all right if there are no more questions or comments is there a motion a motion to approve the professional service proposal for the Capitol Avenue corridor Riviera Drive and Lincoln Way East segment with Christopher B. Burke Engineering. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passes. Moving on, request approval of a professional service proposal for the Capitol Avenue Corridor Dragoon Trail segment. To Chris. Good morning again. Chris Brown, Economic Development Specialist, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, offices on the 7th and 11th floors. Uh, before you is a professional service proposal from Christopher B. Burke Engineering for survey and preliminary engineering work on approximately 1,900 feet of frontage along Dragoon Trail uh, to construct a pedestrian trail that would connect the Capitol Avenue trail system uh, with George Wilson Park, which again is also a ready grant uh, submission. It's actually a featured project in that, in that packet. Uh, at their, and just as a, an aside, at their November 9th public hearing, uh, the County Council heard and approved a tax phase in incentive with Ladig Systems, Inc. Uh, for an expansion of their facility there on Dragon Trail. Part of the terms of that incentive was the donation of this right-of-way uh, for this trail construction. The proposal is a not to exceed amount of $21,800. Redevelopment Commission heard and approved this proposal last week at their November 9th meeting. Staff requests your favorable approval. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Are there, in fact, any questions or comments from the board? Sure, I give comments. Um, this is great, the stuff you guys are doing for all the recreational aspect of that. Um, again, all the communities can be connected at some point. Uh, I know that 
I'm trying to help North Liberty. They want to do a path that they already have done and hook that up with Potato Creek. So there's just a lot of good things happening on, on that front. And um, while still serving, like uh, in the spring, we are going to have a county commissioner bike club, Mr. Castelny. <laughs> Excellent. Nice. If it's a tandem, if you do most of the work, I'm in. <laughs> You'd be in the back. Um, I'm in. So again, I think it, it's good. This is awesome for the community. The recreation is a big deal. So hopefully, if we could ever do something in Portage Woods, uh, so everybody can ride by and go into there at some point. So appreciate all the hard work. This is a good thing. Thank you. It is. It is a good thing. Any other questions or comments? Is there a motion? A motion to approve the professional service proposal for the Capitol Avenue Corridor Dragoon Trail segment with Christopher B. Burke Engineering. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And last but not least, least, we have resolution R30C2021 authorizing interlocal agreement related to the construction of the Penn Township Fire Station number 13 project. So earlier this summer, the, we were before you to uh, ask for the first approval for the first interlocal agreement to provide funding to Penn Township as they were doing site work and, and site development for a new fire station. Uh, over the last several months, we work with Penn Township as they're closing out their project, still having additional site work that needs to be done, the construction of Candace Lane and some other drainage and, and site work related to that. We're here today with a final closeout request. Uh, so resolution R30-C 2021 uh, would approve uh, the funding up to $415,000 to provide Penn Township with the additional funds needed to complete their project. They soon hope to be in their building, uh, probably will be in before the end of the year. So this is a great uh, culmination of work at the site. So any questions, I would be happy to answer. Are there in fact any questions for Mr. Bill? Absolutely. Um, is there an issue, somebody said there's an issue, that Burkhart still has a sign on site that... There, there is still a, a Burkhart sign that needs to be relocated. Uh, funds have been dispersed to do that. That work just hasn't been completed yet. So I believe that's still yet to be done. Okay. And I, that's, that's Separate. happening between Penn Township and, and Burkhart. Right. So I'm not really sure the details there. Because people contacted me about that. Was there an issue when the property was purchased and, and all that 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 wasn't taken care of in the past or is that just so there was a there was a billboard on site when the site was purchased there was an active contract and lease with burkhart between the the prior property owners uh but again i i don't know all the the final details of okay. where those so at the end of the day that has nothing to do with st joe county doing your our stuff that's correct that's between we actually have provided money for the relocation of that board at some point when that board relocation happens. So that's all part of this much larger agreement for funds. Okay. So is that our responsibility or is that Penn's? So ultimately it's Penn Township and Burkhart's to work through the, the deal where that billboard ends up on site. It's been approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals for a location. It's, it's, it has all the approvals for the relocation. Uh, the trigger just needs to be pulled on that relocation or whatever that final deal is. Okay, that, but that should be, we shouldn't be helping Penn. We've done all this other stuff. That's their... That's theirs to finish their out, gig. correct. Okay. Yep. I have no further questions. Are there other questions or comments? Hearing none, is there a motion? A motion to approve this resolution R-30-C-2021 for the Penn Township Fire Station. Second. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, com Commissioner Castelny? Yes, it's, sir. It's Peter Augustino with a point of order here, if I may. Most certainly. Uh, I know that the approval of the uh, contract with the uh, merit officers was part of what was approved with the ordinances. However, uh, accompanying that was an agreement with the uh, Merit officers, which should also, I think, believe, separately be approved by the uh, commissioners uh, as the entity which approves contracts with the county. Uh, and I think a simple uh, motion and approval of that contract, uh, the terms of which are reflected already in the ordinances approved, but I think that would be appropriate. 
We should sound ask good. Our, our sound attorney. sound good to you, Mr. Mish. That so I, I would just add that <clears throat> originally we had the agreement on uh, on the agenda. Uh, it seems to have been taken off. But I, but I agree with Mr. Augustino. The you've you've approved the council resolution. However, the council resolution, when you dig into that language, just to prove the financial aspects of the the three-year contract with the county police and the FOP and not the overall contract. So we still need an approval vote, technically an approval vote to approve the contract itself. So if you could please uh, let us know who you are oh, for the sir, record. I'm yeah. Troy Warner, uh, attorney for the county sheriff and the county police department. I have an office at the county jail, 401 West Sample Street. So you're comfortable with this, Mr. Mish. So here's my recommendation. Troy, why don't you state the language that you would like us to make in a motion? Um, I would, we would just ask for a motion approving, uh, and this agreement is in your, uh, your, your packets. I've got extra copies if you'd like the agreement. Um, we would just ask for a motion approving a compensation agreement between the Board of Commissioners of uh, St. Joseph County and the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 155 regarding the merit police officer raises. Um, we, we're also prepared to just spend a few minutes going over it if you like that. Um, we know we've, this would be now the fourth presentation that we've done on it, if, so it's up to you guys how much information you'd like. Or so, Commissioner Dieter, I know you were actively involved in this piece. Are you comfortable? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if we need any, just for public input on this, it was, we've had hearings and, and all that. I'm comfortable with that, yes. Okay. okay. I would, would add that uh, Commissioner Dieter took part, three of the county council members also took part in the negotiation on the agreement. Um, and it did pass the county council nine to nothing. Um, so does Troy's motion exist? So moved, yes. Second, yes, second that. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion carries. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, the thank you women Mr. Augustino. The, the women and the men of the county police department, thank you and uh, welcome aboard Mr. Mish. Thank you, sir. All right, let me move back to Board of Commissioners portion of the agenda. The first item is Resolution R29C2021 concerning the submittal of public plans for redistricting. Counselor, name and address for the record and start us off, please. Good morning, Board of Commissioners. My name is Doug Kowalski with the law firm of Kroger, Gardas and Regas. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. By way of a little history, um, on October 5th of 2021, the board adopted the redistricting guidelines of the uh, Board of Commissioners of St. Joe County. Those guidelines did three main things. One, set out the legal requirements for redistricting. Uh, first is that the year after a census is conducted, uh, redistricting must take place. So there's the, conduct, the conduct of a um, census, uh, and then we're gonna get into three other uh, dates of the census that I think will shed some light on questions that have been asked. Uh, the next is uh, legal guidelines is using that uh, census data that's available. So under Title I, Article One, 3.5, 3, subsection B, the state legislature says that when redistricting, the district redistricting body should use the most recent census data available, even if it's not in effect. Then under subsection D, the statute says for purposes of population parameters, so determining which process to use, um, you use the most recent census data in effect. The 2020 census data was received by the governor and there was an executive order accepting that October of this year. That census data does not become in effect until April of 2022. So the commission uses the um, 2020 census data to draw the maps, but the most recent census data in effect determines the process. 
there's the legal criteria. It was the first thing that uh, guidelines addressed. The second were the criteria to be considered when drawing the maps. Um, the first thing to consider was contiguous territory. Uh, second, reasonably compact. The third is equal population uh, to the extent that it's available. Equal population is not required under the law um, for local units. Uh, the commission in their guidelines did three things though. Under federal and state law, it's been shown that a 10% population deviation constitutes a prima facie showing that it's a constitutional redistricting. So they set a goal of a lower than 10% total top population deviation. The next thing the guidelines did was established a 5% cutoff. So if there was a greater than 5% total population deviation, the Board of Commissioners was required to have findings on why the population deviation was over five uh, and using the criteria established by the guidelines to make that sh written showing. Uh, the next uh, criteria was uh, respect for precinct boundary lines. Uh, the fifth was a, a respect for communities of interest and the board showed, uh, found that the South Bend was a community of interest it also recognized in the recitals that township lines uh, were required under state statute to be followed, uh, to be kept in whole for council districts, and so that uh, they showed townships as a community of interest and uh, desire to keep those together. The sixth was uh, no dilution or for minority or political voting strength. The seventh, I'm sorry, and that were that were those were all of the uh, criteria. Uh, the third thing it did was allow for public participation, there was public notice, and allowed for submission of comments to the guidelines themselves, but also maps. Um, no maps were submitted pursuant to the guidelines. However, two maps were submitted last week at the commissioner's meeting, and in the interest of uh, the public, the Board of Commissioners thinks it's best to address those uh, two maps today. What, what was that last line you just said? That the, uh, this resolution addresses those two maps in the interest, in the public interest. The, you said the commissioners already addressed those? No, that's what, the, that's what the resolution does. So that was your history. Now we're getting into resolution 29C2021. And I won't read through all of it. Uh, it acknowledges that two maps were addressed are submitted at last week's meeting. It acknowledges the criteria set forth in the guidelines uh, that were passed unanimously by the Board of Commissioners on October 5th. It finds that map A, which was the first map submitted uh, at the meeting last week, had a total population deviation of 2% and map B had a total population deviation of 0.33%. It also acknowledges that both map A and map B divide Penn Township, Portage Township, Clay Township, Warren Township into two or more commissioner districts and portions of South Bend into three proposed commissioner districts. The resolution acknowledges that while map B has a lower total population deviation than the commissioner's pros map of roughly 0.3% uh, difference in total population deviation between the two maps, that map B does not reflect the other criteria established by the guidelines uh, adopted again unanimously by the board on October 5th and that neither map A nor map B meets the guidelines of the Board of Commissioners. Uh, finally, in the findings, it respectfully thanks the public for submitting the two maps and their participation in the process. And I would be happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments from the board? Sure. Mr. Dieter. This, uh, did you write this newest resolution? Our law firm prepared it for the. Okay. Because we had received a, uh, also in our first packet last week, we had a resolution, the same number, 
the verbiage is different, and we just got this one uh, yesterday. And could you tell me, because in the first, are you familiar with the first resolution that went out in our packet last week? I don't have a copy of it. Um, I, I reviewed it last week. Okay. Because in one of the whereas is, um, it alludes, alludes to State Board of Elections versus Bartolami, Bartolome. Are you familiar with that case? I'm not familiar with that recital. Um, I don't have the facts of the case off the top of my head, no, sir. Okay, because that was in the first packet that we got last week. And then in this, um, the new packet, which you're, apparently your firm put together, there's a, another case of uh, Mahan versus Howell. Or what, what's that case about? But just, just for clarification, so the first say, setting that you issued was in the, in the first resolution that we voted on, yeah, on last week. So it's the R28C2021. So that is the, that's the citing, or that's the resolution that Commissioner Dieter is referring to. So my question, I'm just asking why that there's, there's a lot more verbiage and the one that your firm put together as opposed to the one that we had in our, in this agenda packet last week. So I don't know if you know about this or, but it's, it's totally different from one, the one we received last week and the one that we are looking at now, which was sent out yesterday. I, 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 if you have a copy, I'd like to see that it's totally different. I understand that there was one case, the Mahan versus Hollowell added, which shows that reapportionment is beneficial to voters of the county, can be recognized on a rational basis uh, for supporting the redistricting so that population isn't the sole consideration, and that's why that case was added. Uh, but I, You know how that's different from the, the State Board of Elections versus the Bartolome that was in the first one? Again, it's probably unfair again, to you because you don't I'm have sorry, that. I don't so. have that in front of me. But you, are you familiar with that case, the State Board of Elections in 81? I don't recall the facts okay. off the top of my head, sir. And then in, in the, new, the new draft that y'all... So I guess just, these are two separate resolutions. So this is not... <clears throat> so resolution R92021. Oh, it's the same, same number. This was amended with all this stuff added. That's why I'm asking the question because numbers. the numbers are there. All you got to do is look at the numbers. This was what we got in our packet last week. This is a new one we got yesterday, and that's why I'm asking the difference. Um, so there's a possibility it was misnumbered. <clears throat> I don't think it was numbered. The verbiage is the same on the front page. All this stuff is added. So I'll, I'll get back to yep. It's Todd, right? Mm -hmm. Your first name? My name's Doug Kowalski. Okay, my, my fault. So on that second page of the whereas where the Mahan versus Howland, like the next whereas, it says, the commissioners find that the submitted maps divide the communities of interest and fail to maintain. Did the commissioners have a meeting to say that that map didn't fit the criteria? Did the commissioners have a meeting to say that the maps? Did, did you didn't read submit? this part where it said the commissioners aren't accepting this because of these reasons? Correct. This is a resolution in front of you for your consideration. You have not found anything yet. Uh, the purpose of introducing this resolution is so that you can vote on it. Okay, but the, the commissioners, we didn't meet as a group and look at the other two maps that were brought in. That's what I'm saying. Oh. No, as a okay. group, you found unanimously to um, appoint President Kostilny as the um, coordinator for the redistricting. Okay, well, I'm just saying that we didn't do that. Um, so it, at the end of the day, this has been quite the... Uh, everybody can throw in their adjectives on that, okay? It's just... Uh, there's just a lot of things that I think have gone wrong. One, the public input I don't think was very good. Because uh, we voted on the fifth on, on the thick packet of, of legalese on all that of the public's input on this. Um, another attorney who was here last, last Tuesday expressed when, when the legal part of, which I get, the, we, we put it out legally. We did the Mishawaka, Mishawaka Enterprise I don't know how many people read that. South Bend Tribune, but the attorney who said that, when I asked him how many, what's the subscription, where does that go, he had no idea. Legal ads aren't put online on the Tribune, so I don't know if you're aware of that. So again, I think we, we could have done a lot, a lot more on getting public input, because even in, 
exhibit ones of, of the rules of when we adopted this on the 5th, the 15th, 10 days later, was the last day for members of the public to submit objections or written comments regarding the gifts. So one, with a lot of people not knowing the stuff that comes out, um, and again, I'll take response. We should have done a lot better job as county people to get that information out, which wasn't yeah. done. We, like when we speak, just let us talk because everybody will talk and, and that's fine. Um, again, just putting that out, the information was slow getting out. We never provided people with the opportunity of how to make a map or all the criteria that needs to go in from the different districts, the different precincts, the lines and all that. It's a very complicated issue and I don't think, I don't know how to do that per se, but the general public um, needed that. And we had a meeting last night, which was well tended by both sides, which is awesome. Everybody has their opinion. And some maps were then presented and, and set out um, for us to further look at. Um, I don't think we have a drop deadline where we can't work together on getting all this going. So again, at the end of the day, this, this creates the decisiveness that we see in on a national level, I think is ridiculous. Um, last summer, there was looting, there was rioting, there was burning, people were killed. St. Joe County should not get into that realm where we can't sit in a room and work together to make something that is gonna be good for the residents of St. Joe County. This has nothing to do with your firmer stuff, so I'm not going after you. I'm just going after process or lack of with this whole thing. It's. Uh, for, it, for all of us to get in this room and having one side here, one side here, where we can't talk, the amount of emails that I've gotten from people who I thought were my friends and the verbiage used of the animosities that go on in, in the role of government. And President Castellani alluded to that in his, his talk a couple weeks ago of this will be his last term around and just the divisiveness that goes on in, in this world. And we shouldn't get to that point. We should be able to sit down and talk. You know, I disagree with Andy on some issues and stuff, but we, we can still talk and be, be friends at the end of the day. So I just think there was, this has been a lot of uh, time that could have been more productive, as you all heard, sitting through all the stuff we do in county government. A lot of stuff is being passed. Things were improving in the county. And this is just, it just sets a bad president of what we should be doing as the elected officials listening to both parties or all three parties or whoever wants to put their opinion and I don't think that has been done at all. So I think at the end of the day, we could have done a much better job and then I will wait for other comments from the commissioners before I make a motion on this, but um, I, I think we failed the voters of St. Joe County on this. Thank you, Commissioner Dieter. So just as a point of reference, <clears throat> this resolution before us now is not the resolution that we voted on last week. Right. This is a resolution that just addresses the two maps that we, were, that we received at our public meeting, albeit after the, the date that they were required, but we still saw them and looked at them to see if they were better than the map so we could include things in the map, in the map that was proposed. So, this so are you going to allow new comment, public comment on this new resolution? Point of order, uh, we have public comment on uh, the agenda, but right now it's not appropriate at this time. But okay. that's after the vote. This is a new resolution. Are you going to allow public comment before the vote? I would say that yes, we should allow public comment because it is a new resolution and that is, but keep in mind, this is, the public comment is limited to this resolution and limited to the maps that were presented versus not so that if if folks start straying too far from this piece that you'll have a, you'll have a chance to make any public comment you want at the end of the meeting but this is limited to the maps that we received and then i think public comment is appropriate just because that's what we do we, do we have do we have copies of the map you. that everybody the could resolution. see so I, it's, I, I'm not sure who's speaking, but it is not your turn to speak at this point. We're still having conversation among the Board of Commissioners, and when it's time for public comment, um, we can certainly open that up to whomever it is, and I can't see uh, on the screen that I show. So once again, though, this resolution is simply 
to address the maps that we received. So are there any other questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners related to this before I hear public comment? Do we have copies of those two maps so people can comment on that and look at them? I, I, I do not. But you had looked at these maps, right? Our law firm has reviewed those maps. And you had reviewed the maps. Okay, the, the question isn't whether he has, it's the commissioners and providing them for the people so they can comment publicly Approved. on the maps that this resolution is about. Yeah. So if someone wants to go make copies for those, then that's a great idea. But as of now, we do not have copies for those. So anyway, so are there? Okay, but we don't have copy of the map. So, Commissioner Castelny, I think we need to oh, the maps are there? opening public comment since it's outside of what's stated in the agenda. Okay, before we do all that, I would just like to make a motion that we continue this. There's a lot of information that the public doesn't have. I don't want to throw something in either, who's, whatever, whatever side of, of if you're in, in favor or in opposition to the maps, that's great, but I don't think that we can say, give it to somebody, okay, what do you think? Um, again, there was some, a lot of people at the meeting on both sides last night again. There was several, a couple maps that were brought out, but I'd, I'd like to make a motion to continue this resolution so we can give more public input on the maps that had been turned in and even the maps last night, because again, there's good information on both sides of, of the, the coin for this, so I just think we're rushing this People here came to speak. I don't think it's fair for either side to say, here it is, what do you think? You know, the young man here spent a lot of time on the deviations, the way things are drawn, all the data and the statistics that goes into that, which is pretty complicated at the end of the day. Um, so I'm making a motion that we continue this resolution. I don't know if we need to put a, a week or whatever to, before we make, I'm just asking to, postpone this resolution until we have ample time, I'll say next Tuesday, to vote on this. Do I have a second? Apparently not. Hearing no second, the motion fails. <clears throat> so, so, when it is your time to speak, you will be allowed to speak. I please refrain from everyone making comments from the audience on every side. So we have a, we have a resolution in front of us. I believe it's appropriate that we have public comment on that. I will now open up the public comment related to this specific resolution. For those in favor. We just, they we're opening it up, whoever okay. wants to talk, because. Do you yeah. want to do it in favor, or we'll just, just we'll come just as let we are? Them. We'll just let them. Whatever you want to say, they can say. Really? <laughs> and you please will need to sign in, but please don't wait to sign in until after you speak. There'll be plenty of time to sign in later. Um, I just have a sentence, but I'm Amy Drake from Granger. Um, I think the law firm just said that the new maps didn't meet the proper requirements. So if that's the point, I don't know why we're continuing to talk about the maps that wouldn't work. That's all, thanks. Thank you. Good morning, Cheryl Nix, 17901 Sable Ridge Drive, South Bend, Indiana. I ask that we be able to see the maps before any votes are taken. We are trusting that this law firm and um, the attorneys for this firm are telling us the truth about whether these maps are fair and just. I personally would like to see them and I would like to have a say in that position. And I would appreciate the transparency of being able to see the maps before any votes are taken. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jack Daly. I live at 217 West Michigan Street in New Carlisle. Um, the, the request for public input into the original map that was presented, I don't, geez, I, I do read the paper, but uh, 
I didn't catch that one. And when I, when I give my input, when it's asked for, I like to have it based on information. Uh, I've got none. I'm getting none about the new maps. Uh, it's, it's, this is a public meeting, and yet the public is gagged until after the fact. After you've made your decisions, I get to give you a review, but I don't get to give you input that impacts those decisions. There's nothing public about that. There's nothing democratic about what you people are doing. Thank you, Jack. By the way, there are, in the, uh, the resolution up at the, de there are both maps are in the resolution that we are discussing. You're welcome, Kelly, Jack. Kelly Havens, Granger, Indiana. The key phrase in the law firm's review of the two new maps was that South Bend was divided into pieces in the, the proposed districts on those maps. For the last 25 years that I've been following this, and probably years before that, that has been a consistent flaw in our redistricting maps. There is a group of people, 100,000 of them, in South Bend who have common interests in their water and their parks and their police and their neighborhoods. And there's another 170,000 people all out around them that do not share those interests. They have their own issues, their rural issues, and, and problems, and the way the commissioner districts and the council districts especially have been set up for the last 25 years, it is possible and has occurred that eight of the nine council members are from South Bend. That means that 90% of the council is represented, of the county is represented by that one tiny central area. That's totally unfair and inappropriate. That's not representing the people at all. So what this map does has been waiting a quarter of a century to happen. This is finally the way we represent the true interests of the people of this county. This is what needs to happen. The other maps that have been presented clearly put it back into pieces as it has been for 25 years. That is not what we want to do in this county. So please do not uh, pass the other two maps. This is the map that we need for this county. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Dan Caruso, 305 Compton Street, New Carlisle. The maker of, I believe, Map A. Map A addressed what has been referred to as those islands that seem to appear for no reason in certain places. Um, it, it moved two precincts from District, a, District 1 into District 2 and two precincts from District 3 into District 2, which took care of those islands. I find it odd that when those maps came out in 2011, Commissioners Fleming and Castilli thought they were wonderful. Those are great. This, this is working together. Now all of a sudden we come up with this uh, party um, pacification to, to do what the party expects you to do and say, oh, those are terrible maps and we're, we're straightening that out. Again, what, what this does and why you think it's good to put the minority section segment of the community in one district and then the other two segments of the community in two other districts is beyond me. You have to have equal, you have to have representation from the minority community, voices from the minority community with a commissioner who, has, who is beholden to them. You have, to, you have to have those minority voices in all three districts to have equal representation, not just all of them gathered into one group, and then they come here on Tuesday at 10 o'clock and get outvoted two to one. This simply is not fair. The map I submitted on A takes, uh, map A takes care of those, takes care of the island issues everybody had a problem with. 
if anybody has a problem with, with what still exists, uh, Commissioner Dieter had an excellent suggestion. I think we follow it. The, the great suggestion would be the, the council and the Board of Commissioners sit down and come up with something jointly. I don't know why. Well, I know why. I think everybody in here knows why. It's, it's this, the way the country has become. Sit down, act like reasonable people, and come up with a new map. Thank you. Thank you. And just one point of clarification. Uh, C Commissioner Fleming was not commissioner in 2011. So it's been referenced as commissioner that we were both, Deb was not a commissioner in 2011. All right. I think that was in 11. My name is Amanda Govert Conrath. I live at 1015 College Street in South Bend. Um, I am frankly disgusted. Um, Derek Dieter is my commissioner, and I applaud him for standing up and saying that the public needs more input because, as I have said three times now, the map as proposed by the commissioners is biased as use whatever adjective you want to there. It is unfair to the residents of this county to push this through as quickly as it has been pushed through. We've had one public comment meeting here in this office or this building and one last night that wasn't even attended by Commissioner Castelny or Fleming and that is also insulting to the voters of St. Joseph County. You should have been there last night to listen. In person, meeting with the public. It is your responsibility as elected officials to show up and meet with your constituents. Emails and phone calls aren't enough. We expect better of you. Please do better. Thank you. Pam Clays at 1106 Bellevue Avenue in South Bend. I've heard reference that uh, it's been wanted that South Bend have its own commissioner district for 20 some years. I've never heard that before. That's crazy. We each, all of us, South Bend has its own water. We take care of that. That's not what we get from the county. We have a lot of services in the county. Board of Health, I, I could name them all. What is needed is more public input. I, did, I had no idea that your initial guidelines were not to split townships. Did anybody else know that? One. I'm sorry. This does not deserve to be passed. I strongly recommend you meet with the council meet with the map drawers, meet with the public. The session last night was productive. And if you are truly leaders, public comment is what drives a community. And so I ask you, I commend Commissioner Dieter for calling for a postponement. There's no rush for this except I guess by the end of the year so people know where to vote. Um, but we've got two months, month and a half. We need public working sessions and open ears and eyes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name's Ken Smith. I live at 536 South Sunnyside in South Bend. Um, I'd like to express my disappointment in the law firm uh, overburdening their lawyer so much that he comes here today not fully knowing what's in the documents the firm has presented over the last few weeks. And I wish him good luck in having a more equitable workload. So the, the list of things that were to be included in the maps included a not diminishing the importance, of the importance of minority voting. That list you gave us, that's part of the contract. Uh, I think it's quite clear that many people, many reasonable people would judge that the proposed maps fail to meet that criteria by putting South Bend in a single district. If the maps from the law firm fail to meet the, the criteria given by the council in the contract, then the law firm 
is in breach of contract. And that would be a very good reason to slow things down here, for sure. Um, thank you. Thank you. And please make sure if you have to make sure to sign in if you have not when you make your comments so we have a record. Good morning, uh, commissioners. My name is Darcel Burton. I live at 726 Johnson Street, Westside. Um, I agree with um, Mr. Dieter uh, about delaying. Uh, so the residents, homeowners on the west side, of our, on our side of town, can have a chance to be able to come out and to vote these decisions. I don't think it's fair either that we don't even know about certain meetings that be going on. We get it by ear, and then we when we pop up, we're looking at like strange, like, what are you doing here? Well, we have the right to be here. And I think that um, it needs to be delayed. That's it. Thank you. Any other individuals in the audience that would like to comment on this? Seeing no, oh, hold on. You want to make your comments, and you can sign in when you're done. That'd be great. Good morning. My name's Marita Freeman. I live at, live at 725 North Johnson Street here in South Bend. <clears throat> I attended three meetings uh, regarding the Kennedy Park project. Three meetings. I'm not sure if uh, anything has been decided from or what became after those three meetings. Um, the, the particular meeting that was held last night, I only found out yesterday afternoon. Um, with the Candy Park project, they sent out postcards, doorknob postcards um, that you hang on your doorknob, or a postcard came in in your mailbox, you know, to inform the people of just what's going on in our community. I don't know what happened in this instance though, because no one got or received postcards. At least I didn't receive one at 725 Johnson Street regarding uh, re remapping or redistricting. I'm also asking, too, that this be postponed uh, for the American people, we the people here in St. Joe County, and allow all of us to have our input before um, the final decision is made. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving on to friends that are online. If you would please use the raise hand feature. Allison M., you are up. Thank you. My name is Allison Meinsberg. I reside at 2633 Arrowhead Drive in German Township, City of South Bend. So um, I'm one of the people that will be cut out of South Bend, as is the rest of my neighborhood, through these new maps. So the idea that we're holding all of South Bend together is certainly false. Um, I would like to um, express my concern that in a quick uh, search just now, I was unable to find any of the actual materials for what you guys approved on October 5th until I believe the November 9th meeting. That was the first time I could see the rules that applied. And unlike what Mr. Castellani stated, which was that the township boundaries were required to be followed when the last redistricting occurred, um, this indicates that even now the act does not require that the districts abide by township boundaries, um, but that the council decided that that was a good requirement in this case. They should have known at the time that Portage Township is most of the city of South Bend and that therefore they would be lumping all of the city of South Bend into one district. And while that might be something that they feel comfortable with, I don't think that's something that I'm comfortable with. Um, I think that when you lump everyone into one district based on a history of redlining and white flight, that that's a bit of a problem in, um, equi in developing equitable districts. And I hope you guys will reconsider the fact that none of this information about how to build our own maps, which is something as a GIS specialist with over 15 years of mapping experience, I would have been happy to work on, that that information was not available for me to work on easily until November 9th. I am a single mom, but I'm politically active and I'm upset that I have to spend this much time digging for things instead of spending time with my kid to ensure that my kid has 
equitable representation, and I do as well in the next 10 years, um, he will be able to vote within that time frame, and these maps will still be around then. So you guys need to be doing better if you actually care about this community. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Cliff, you are up. Hi. Uh, so I typically don't make comments. Uh, Clifton French, 2311 Topswood Lane, South Bend, Indiana. Um, all this talk about about um, disenfranchising voters or or diluting minority voters. St. Joseph County is 30 percent um, minority. Um, if you're if people are recommending that you put 10 percent um, minority votes in every single district, that is disenfranchising voters. That is what is uh, that is diluting um, that's diluting voices, right? Um, that is getting rid of, of representation there. Uh, this is a coordinated attack um, from the Democrats against Republicans with a Republican on the commission joining it. Um, don't fall for it. Stick with your guns and uh, and, and vote for for the uh, for the maps that, that that are right for the county. Thanks. Thank you, Steve F. Yes, hi, this is uh, Steve Francis at 54174 Judea Lake Drive up in Clay Township. Uh, first, uh, I was the one that asked for the public meeting just to be to clarify. I appreciate your uh, granting that, that we can have a, a comment on this new resolution. This new resolution, first of all, on process, I don't, I don't find it. Apparently, it was put together last night. It was not distributed to the public. Uh, it's not with the agenda, I don't think, as the maps were last week. So I may be wrong on that, but I've looked for it everywhere, and I've looked for the maps. I am familiar with uh, Dan Caruso's map. Uh, I think it does the least uh, amount of adjusting, and that would create uh, more unity in the community and not the division that has been created by Commissioners Castellney and Fleming, who have uh, pushed forward this with very limited time for the public to review and to comment and to participate. And both of you, I think, stand to, uh, to, stand to, to gain a lot of criticism for the fact that you have divided our communities. On the map itself, look, I live, I live three blocks north of South Bend city limits. I do not have, I'm in a suburb, I do not have a community of interest with a farmer down in Walkerton or over in New Carlisle necessarily. I have a community of interest with South Bend. And as we know, we have a lot of suburbs that have communities of interest. You are dividing up communities of interest. With, these, with this particular map. And the lawyer has cited uh, Dan Caruso's map as not being uh, uniting communities of interest. So I don't see how you can possibly maintain that without being contradictory. Finally, on the process, um, let's, let's face it. You have not come to public meetings, neither one of you. You have not made yourself available. You've not responded to the numerous uh, complaints and civil, com civilly, made civilly to you about what you are doing. You are ramming this through. I'm disappointed you voted in, in Commissioner Delney, you are my current commissioner. I'm disappointed that you have refused to accept and vote for Commissioner Dieter's very reasonable proposal to take a step back take a breath, look at these two maps, present them to the public, which we don't have. I would, I would say that we do not have the proper information to, to comment on the maps. And, and in fact, uh, I would argue Caruso's map is much more uh, in line with your, uh, with your criteria than, than your proposed uh, very drastic changing of the boundaries of the commissioner's districts, which will impact also the county council. I would encourage you to work with the county council as was done in 2010, which you have not done up to this point. You are creating a lot of division between yourselves and the other county governing body, and that is deplorable. I urge you to reconsider D Commissioner Dieter's motion and spend more time looking at the maps, understanding and meeting with community Mr. Francis, members. Mr. Francis, your three minutes are up. And, um, and uh, reconsidering that Thank motion. You, Mr. Francis. Take, taking different, a different tack Love today. Maps is up. Hi, this is um, Cheryl Schlumpert at Mystique Drive in Mishawaka. And um, first, I'd like to thank you for um, sticking to process. I know many people have said that there wasn't one. There was. Um, we talked about ignorance. Well, 
You know, when the um, officer writes my ticket, he tells me that ignorance is no excuse for the law, and I get my ticket anyway. Um, Mr. Dieter, I have sat in county council meetings where all of the public comment was against a resolution, and the resolution was voted for anyway. So I find it deplorable that you would say, you know, we should make our decisions based on public comment because I've observed that's not how it works. Um, I am happy to see that these new maps would actually give equal representation across the board instead of having most of our council people coming from South Bend. I'm not from South Bend. Um, and no matter where we draw the lines, somebody's not going to like it. So I appreciate that you're following the process and that you're going to stick to your guns and continue to follow the process. Um, and these new maps that were submitted were outside of that process and therefore should not be considered. Thank you. Um, the professor, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to butcher your name, Pref professor from St. Mary's, you are up. Uh, thanks, Commissioners. My name is Ron John Rahatke. Um, I live at 17620 Jude Lake Drive South, um, right outside the city of South Bend. Um, I had presented Map B uh, while, uh, I suppose, while Mr. Caruso had presented Map A. Uh, I also repeatedly reached out to all three commissioners. Uh, I told them that we all needed to work together. Uh, I mentioned that the best maps would be ones that involve input from both of the parties, uh, the commissioners, council members, and a diverse group of, uh, of community leaders. I don't think my maps are perfect. I don't think the commission's maps are perfect either. I think mine are better because I actually heard some public input prior to making them, whereas the commission did not, at least in a public setting, prior to making them. But of course, I have my blind spots and biases too, and I didn't hear from as many people as I would have liked to. I want to hear from some of the people who are in favor of the commissioner's proposed maps. I want to work with a multipartisan group to look at all three submissions and work together and make ones that are better than all three of them. Commissioners Dieter, Fleming, and Castellani, how closely did any of you personally look at my map or Mr. Caruso's? You personally. What were your specific comments about them? Yours, not from the firm. Let's talk about this. I have comments on yours and you have comments on mine. Let's work together. Let's discuss this. I know St. Joe County can perform redistricting in a better way than what is happening now. Let's make your legacies fair maps for the residents of the county. We need redistricting to be done properly. Thank you. Thank you. M. Hammond, you are up. Thank you, Mike Hammond, St. Joe County Auditor with offices on the second floor of the County City Building and class at this point in time. I, I would like you guys to consider Commissioner Dieter's uh, 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 motion to table this for a while. Uh, just a couple of years ago, the city of South Bend wanted to create a uh, citizens community re review board, citizens review board for the police. And they held numerous meetings, numerous meetings out in the public. They got public input. They talked to the FOP. They talked to the administration. It took a long time uh, to get the process right. This is much bigger, in my opinion. And this talks about people's representation. And you all did it behind closed doors. Let's be honest. Um, and uh, you know, without any conversation with the council or anyone else, I think if you've got such a great map, what you guys should do is you should push pause, go before the public, and defend it, and let and 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 and, and make your points out there. And uh, if it stands up to scrutiny, then great. I don't think it will, quite frankly. Um, and I think what you should do is to is to get the public's input about something that, that's very important. I think it's really but it, it really would be important just in terms of engendering trust. This does not engender trust, okay? So push pause, get some public input. Maybe they'll have a better idea, and at least not everyone's going to be happy, but at least there'll be people have a sense that they ha they were able to contribute, and they're they were being heard. No one thinks they're being heard now. No one thinks this. And um, no one's buying, you know, this whole idea that we, you know, uh, the, the reasoning for it. People see this, they know what's going on. So let's 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 push pause and then and then do a reset and and let people have some say. Okay? Thank you. That's all I got. Have a good day. Thank you, Mike. Rylander, you are up. Hi, my name is Ellen Rylander. Um, I live uh, on Hawthorne Drive in South Bend. Um, uh, first of all, there's always a legal process for public notice. 
I have no reason to believe that the commissioners did not follow it in this instance. Um, if if the people, so so it seems like the issue is more, um, we're, we're being heard right now. You know, we, um, our voices are being heard right now. The commissioners certainly understand what's going on. I wanna have my voice heard and I wanna say that I support the maps. I live uh, again in downtown South Bend, near downtown. My parents live in rural St. Joe County. I grew up in St. Joe County. I'm saying that because the issues that they face and what they need from their commissioners is very different from I from what I need as a city resident. My parents rely on the county for police protection and they've been broken into several times. They've been, their house has been shot at. They need police protection from the county. They, they rely on road repairs, snow removal, all from the county. I don't have those concerns because the city provides those services for me and that police protection. This map gives rural people who live in rural St. Joe County, especially, but also people who live in the suburbs and don't aren't part of an incorporated uh, town, incorporated South Bend or Mishawaka, um, commissioners who have to be more aware of their interests. But at the same time, it gives people like me who live in South Bend um, essentially our own voice. We're almost assured that somebody from South Bend who has to focus on South Bend interests is going to be on that commission. Now, my new commissioner is going to be Derek Dieter, and I am very excited about him. He has been, he's actually been my parents commissioner. He's been doing a good job. I hope he continues to do a good job. I hope to vote for him in a couple of years. Um, but I support the maps and I support um, a, a method that allows city interests to have a voice while also giving uh, people in the rural county uh, commissioners who are can focus on their unique needs. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, any other people on the call wish to speak? All right, seeing none, I will now close the public hearing. So what we have before us now is resolution R29C2021. Once again, this does not does not reflect any, the, the vote that took place last week, it is not reflected in this resolution. Are there any final comments from the board before I call for another motion? Yeah, uh, of course, this resolution, the new one, not the one that was given to us last week, but this new one, and this is your first day, I think, officially? Sort of, yeah. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah. So at the, at the, the, had you had a chance to review this before it got into our packet? Uh, it was emailed to me yesterday. Okay. Did you have a chance to review it? Yes. Do you have an opinion of it? I think Mr. Bosmus firm did a good job of putting together a resolution for your uh, consideration. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Mish. Okay. <laughs> you hired a lawyer. There you go. I get it. Okay. At the, end, at the end of the day, this is the, the, what I'm concerned about is the process. Okay, the process hasn't been very good. And the word process, I'll go back. Um, when my son played at Alabama and we met with Coach Saban, the process that the University of Alabama does makes them so successful. This process or lack of it that we're doing is dysfunctional, again. <sighs> There's just been a lot of variables in this, and at the end of the day, um, the way that things have been done is I look at everybody's face and body language, people are all yacked up. You're either for us or against us. Okay, you're always gonna have opinions, but there's no reason that we can't work together collectively for something that's good, at least talk about it, instead of this is the way it is, this is the way we're gonna do it, we're given our walking orders, and, and boom. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, everybody, do you want to get comment from everybody? Or do you want me to do a motion again that y'all will vote second? Whatever you, well, so, you, you know, okay, I, I'll make I another don't we're allowed to make the same motion twice if it fails, so. Okay, so instead of. Well, I guess I will refer to our, our counselor, but. Correct, no duplicative motions are allowed. It's plain duplicative, duplication of. You're, you're, what you're suggesting is um, tabling the resolution? It, will tabling and postponement be the same thing? Yes. So okay. That, that's already been done. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion to not approve this resolution. Do I have a second? Having heard no 
Second. May I ask why they wouldn't second that? Is there a motion for passage? passage. For passage of resolution R29C2021. Correct. The, the motion to, to not pass this was, failed for lack of a second. Right. So okay. I'm asking for a motion for passage for R29C2021. So moved. Will you, either of you comment on why you're passing it? I will. Good. I will second that motion. Having heard a second, uh, Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I would vote nay. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Before I make my vote, I will say why I'm making this vote. This is simply a resolution that we received two maps, and the maps did not meet the criteria that we set forward better than the other two. The, the, map that, the first map proposed, map A, the population deviation is almost three times as high as the other, and it splits up communities of interest. We may differ on what that community of interest is, but it splits them up. The second one had a better population deviation by, um, by more than half of ours, but it still split up communities of interest and population areas. So that is why I am not so, I'm supportive of the map that was proposed. Then we'll talk about the final vote when we get to the final vote. I will vote aye for that. So the first resolution passes. All right, moving on. This is now our resolution R28C2021. This is the resolution that we voted on last week. There is no public comment on this, but I will ask the Board of Commissioners, are there any final comments they would like to make before calling for a vote? Yes, I'd like to hear Deb Fleming's comments. Well, again, I just want to do what's best for our county and help people the right way. So that's what I'd like to do. Please okay. refrain from commenting on things until it's public comment. Then you can comment all you care to. Mr. Dieter, any final words? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Again, th there's this, and there's all behind the scenes stuff that happens in politics, which is another reason I really despise the political world, because we can't get honest answers, we can't get communication, we can't work together, which is the entire premise of what we should be, be doing for St. Joe County. In reference to Commissioner Fleming's, <coughs> it's been a landslide of public input to have this current map, the public has spoken, they want input, they want to be part of the process, so each commissioner can have their vote, that's fine. I, everybody can do their, their thing, but in, in the resolution, again, the, the professor from St. Mary's, um, I've invited him, I don't think anybody reached out to him to say, hey, let's discuss this. I don't think anybody ever sat down with Mr. Crusoe to look at that. The, the, the maps that was, are now on our county website, right, Frank? that um, county council member Ken and Ricky drew up has deviation, has population, there, and that hasn't even been looked at. So again, the, the way this has gone, the process is dysfunctional. I think it's a horrible thing that's happened to the community. Um, and it's just a shame that we got to the point where everybody is dug in, looking at everybody's faces, mean mugging of how dare you, this is ridiculous. It, it's, it's a sad thing, and St. Joe County and politics should not be like this. We sh I disagree with a lot of our county, county council, but we can still sit down in a room and, and, and put our points out and then discuss them. This is leaving no option for that. Again, some of the people alluded to not even knowing about it, which is absolutely correct. You know, to be in the Mishawaka Enterprise and the South Bend Tribune, which their subscription is almost null and void. Okay, that, it, it fulfills the legal, the legalese, but at the end of the day, getting the information out to y'all is what we should have been doing from the start of this. So there's absolutely no way I would vote for this. I think it's bad all the way around. But the other things that happens behind the scenes is even worse than this. And people know what I'm talking about. So. It's very unfortunate that happened, but again, uh, after this, 
I think then it goes to the to the council. They right there. Boundaries, I guess, for there. That would be us. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, again, I think I think everybody on both sides of the coin, even the the hate emails that I have coming in from a certain party is that's part of the gig. So. Um, again, I appreciate everybody's time. Hopefully something can come of this. We're, we're working together finally as a community instead of pulling each other and the divisiveness that happens. So thank you all. All right, I will hold off my comments until um, I cast my vote. Is there a motion for passage? There's a motion to approve and pass it. I will second that motion. Having had a motion and a second, Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I vote nay. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Before I cast my vote, I will, exp I will explain the rationale behind this. So number one, one of the issues that we faced is this was a very shortened timeline um, because we did not receive the census data until the end of August into September. We normally get that months earlier. Infer from that what you will, why the, the, why the information was delayed. But we had to wait then until the state made their boundaries because we wanted to make sure if they made any changes, ours would have to change to reflect that. So then we did not get, were able to take action until the beginning of October for this. So that is why it was, it, the timeline was so small. And we also wanted to make sure that the process was done properly and done legally, which um, not making any comments about how it may or may not have been done in the past. So that, those are the things that were very important to us, that we did that and we hired a firm that had over 30 years of experience. We even asked, are there any local firms here that had that capacity and the answer we received was no. And I think you can see that too by the fact that our council, with faced with a similar situation, also had to go outside the area for this. Um, I have listened to the feedback that was given. I mean, a couple of comments that were made um, that I'm simply doing what my party wants uh, you can ask a large number of people from my party. I often don't do what my party wants. And I'm normally taking grief up here from my own party because I'm not doing what they want. That's not the point. The point is to do what I think is right, what I think is the best decision. You may agree with that. You may disagree with that. But that doesn't change my resolution to do what I think is best. So you can hold up signs. You can send crappy emails to Commissioner Dieter. All that's nonsense. But... That will not change my res resolution to do what I think is the best for the citizens of St. Joseph County. And I think these maps simply are what is best for the citizens of St. Joseph County. It doesn't split up communities of interest. It doesn't have islands floating out in there for other reasons. It keeps areas together. We don't split up townships except we're absolutely necessary due to population areas that we had to. We've heard, I've heard many times over the last year that the city of South Bend does not feel they've been represented by the Board of Commissioners because actions that were taken, in many cases actions that I was supportive of, and I was the only person supportive of those, hence my previous comment. So now we give the citizens of South Bend a voice. Instead of splitting them up and diluting them, we give them a voice. And that was not the intent for these maps. Once again, we removed the political process from these maps. That's why we had elected officials in wherever they landed because we weren't looking and cherry picking and finding one elected official then drawing an island around them or drawing a finger so we could keep these together. They're clean, com as compact as we can make them maps. We tried to remove politics. People can believe that, they cannot believe that, but that is what was done. Stating that, I vote aye. There's two in favor, one against, the resolution passes. Can I comment just quickly on just a bit of your speech? Please. Take it away, sir. Uh, the, the thought that, that suddenly South Bend will have a commissioner voice is not correct because my district represents five precincts in District 1, Eli, the entire South Bend District 2, the entire South Bend District 5, the entire South Bend District 6, the only thing, and actually four in South Bend District 3. So basically everything west and south of the river is currently in my commissioner district. So the thought of finally South Bend has it. And again, the whole conception of there is, there is a line of demarcation between city government and county government. The city of South Bend, you all have nine city council members already. Um, so that's just the thing I wanted to clarify. 
I already represent everything that's south and west of the river. That is all at this time. Well, thank you, Commissioner Dieter. Sure, Commissioner All right, Castelli. moving on, if I can find my agenda. Moving on to old business. Uh, we have Memorandum of Understanding Annual Burn Justice Grant, Assistant Grant Program Award. Is there a motion to remove this from the table? So moved. Wait, I think. Second. I, I will. Is that what you were going to talk on, Steve? Yeah. So I will second that motion. So that now the, the motion is live. Sir. All in favor? Off the old business. Well, we just. It's just oh, yeah, I guess we, yeah, we need you to call the vote. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Mr. Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you for the clarification, Commissioner Dieter. Thank you, Commissioner Castelny. Sir, Steve Noonan, Executive Officer for the Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Bill Redman, uh, Offices 401 West Sample. Before you is a memorandum of understanding concerning the annual uh, burn justice grant that South Bend applies for every year. They distribute it um, among South Bend and Mishawaka at a formula that's been agreed upon years ago. Uh, we just ask that this memorandum continue for this year. Um, we're still awaiting results of what the grant, whether it's been approved or not. Commissioner Dieter, I know you had some questions the last time we heard this. Are you yes, satisfied? Thank you, Steve. We're good. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Is there a motion? Motion to approve the Spurn Justice Assistant Grant Program. Second. Having a motion and a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? I'm voting aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Castelny, how do you vote? Aye. Motion passed. Thank you, Commissioners. Would you like to Thank comment you, on the map, Steve? I apologize. I but probably should have moved you first ahead of this, so I apologize for that. All right. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> public comments. I will now open up the floor to public comments. Please state your name and address for the record. Amy Drake, Granger, Indiana. Um, I, they no longer require address, but thank you for your suge suggestion. No, they don't actually. Anyway, please refrain from commenting on those public commenting. Thank you. I just want to bring up that there are a lot of people here complaining that there has been no public input, that we have not worked with the Democrats on the other side, that we should slow down the process. The people that are saying this are the League of Women Voters, who are a Democratic organization, Mike Hammond, who is a Democrat, and the St. Mary's professor, he's listed on registration records as a hard Democrat. So these people have intentions behind what they are doing. Um, and they also complain, the league ladies complain that they were not met with at their public meeting the other night. The league ladies dominated the public meeting that was here last week. So they don't need two audiences from you. After I was at the league ladies meeting last night, 13 people spoke for the maps and 11 people spoke against the maps. There are a lot of support from these maps. So I think that we all need to know that all these people who want to slow down the process and make it better are Democrats that just want to take over the process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah. Good morning. Deborah Durrell, 21677 Norton Road, South Bend the last resort. She came from Providence when in... Can you move the mic a little closer? She came from Providence when in Rhode Island, where the old world shadows hang heavy in the air. She packed her hopes and dreams like a refugee just as her father came across the sea. She heard about a place people were smiling. They spoke about the red man's way and how they loved the land. They came from everywhere to the Great Divide, seeking a place to stand or a place to hide. Out on the crowded trails, up for a good time, fresh air to thrill your soul under a skies of blue. They called it paradise, I don't know why. Somebody laid the mountains low while the town got high. When the warming winds blew round across the prairies, through the wooded hills and vales to the Lakeland dunes, where heron and osprey fly along the rivers, the beauty of the night, abundant gifts and true. Greed it comes to claim our souls in the race for time, pave over so-called empty land, it's the same old line. They call it paradise, the place to be, 
for an easy take and leave it shallow economy. We can leave it all behind and rock it to the moon, as in our childhood fairy tales with Brooklyn Bridges too. Package up our air and water, engineer our poo, ship our garbage far away back to our dot of blue. Who will provide the grand design? What is yours and what is mine? Because there is no more new frontier. We have got to make it here. We satisfy our endless needs, justify our greedy deeds in the name of economy and in the name of jobs. And you can see us here with these heartfelt prayers, stand up and talk about how much we care. They call it paradise. How's it defined? Do they call it paradise to kiss it goodbye? As our fads, they come and go, one truth remains. Our precious earth and all within, bonds, hearts, and hands. Stars above through soil below, in towns, farms, and fens. The earth our home, the land we love, and all of life our kin. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dan. Dan Caruso, 305 Compton Street. I don't have to say, I guess it goes without saying, that I'm disappointed. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I'm the son of a steel worker. Strong, strong union man, my father. One thing he pounded into me many times, an injury to one is an injury to all. You stand up for those who need to be stood up for. I gotta be honest with you, two of you commissioners would not be sitting comfortably for some time had you been in our household. You would have been a disappointment to my father far beyond anything I ever caused. Commissioner Castilny, I'm not sure what legal actions are going to come out of this. Uh, I understand there are plenty in the, in the plans, but at the end of the day, it appears that you are going to be our commissioner over there in New Carlisle. You've been pushing every development interest that comes in over there and approving of the way it's been done. Behind closed doors, no public meetings. I know you promised things were going to change. We're going to do things different now. Things haven't changed. There's still nothing going on where the public is involved in giving input on what we'd like to see over there on our farmland. We, What's going to go into our water? We still haven't gotten a report on the shredder fire, which pumped over a million gallons of water onto that mess. God knows what into our aquifer, which you guys get too. So who knows what came out of that pile of trash and washed through that thin clay layer down into our water supply. This is the stuff we need to look out for. And I am so disappointed. I, I just feel that... Uh, my friend uh, Deborah Doral, uh, I'm a high school dropout. I get to learn some new words, and when I learn new words, I like to use them. What has been going on here has been perfunctory. Thank you. That's all. It's just everybody sitting up there and uh, just, you've already made up your minds. The conversation is just because you've got to be there. And if you indeed are our commissioner at the end of the day, please listen like Derek has to what we want over there. Consider our input. Uh, don't be perfunctory. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm short. Hello, my name is Johnny Chisholm. Um, I have a little thing to say. I'm a student at IUSB, criminal justice major. And looking at Deborah and Andy, y'all body language tells it all. Y'all really don't care what we're talking about. Y'all really don't care what the public have to say. I was very upset yesterday because y'all wasn't there to hear what the public had to say. Y'all got on them seats up there during voting. The public voted. Y'all haven't done anything. Right now, I'm very upset. Y'all proved that y'all want a racial division in this county. Now y'all got it. 
Thank you. Pam Clays, 1106 Bellevue Avenue. The first comment I want to make um, is that this is not a League of Women Voters protest. Contrary to what Ms. Amy Drake said, the League believes in partisan, in, po let me get this right because I'm so upset. do not refrain from the crowd on people making comments, please. The League wants bipartisan public input in drawing these maps. Nothing is political. Ms. Amy Drake made it political because she somehow got some kind of records that show if they're strong Democrats or whatever. That's not, I'm a League member. I'm not speaking as part of the League. I'm speaking as me, a citizen that has a right to talk. I believe in the League. I agree with the League's uh, decision and components to make public input so it's fair. This has not been fair. Deb Fleming, we have not heard any of your comments. I'd like to know how you, because you're my commissioner, what are your specific things? The other thing I want to say is I am surprised, not really, I'm, I'm so disappointed in your votes. We need to spend our money not paying attorneys on both sides. We need to spend our money helping the citizens of the county. I fear there are going to be a lawsuit or more that's going to cost us money. And I'll just blame the commissioners for that cost. Because it didn't have to be like that. We could have opened it up. We could have had more time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, I have one online. Excellent. Frank, could you please flip my screen so I can see? All right. Is that you, Steve? Yes. All right. Uh, Francis, uh, 54174 Jitty Lake Drive, Clay Township. Again, I, I want to... I don't want to repeat what I said earlier, but I do want to respond to the idea that somehow communities of interest are preserved in these maps, um, in the maps you just approved. And I'm very disappointed that uh, you didn't give the public more time and, and, and uh, meet with the public and various opportunities, provide various opportunities for you to hear at various venues. But um, look, if you just look at District 1, uh, Commissioner Castelny's district, you know, it goes from the northeast uh, corner of St. Joe County, clear up near the Michigan line and Granger wraps all the way, way around, takes in the Clay Township and Granger suburbs, wraps around New Carlisle and the farming area all on the west side, all the way around to the far southeast side. Those are not communities of interest. You have, you have claimed that you're voting for community, keeping communities of interest together, yet you voted to actually not keep communities of interest together. Uh, finally, I do wanna say something on the Chamber of Commerce, uh, 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 funding. Uh, you voted to increase funding for the Chamber of Commerce to, to get leads by 60, by 40 percent. I would like to see a performance evaluation of that. I heard that there, from Bill Shalio that there was one project that got to fruition and you're spending 300000 over the next year for the Chamber to generate leads. You have no performance evaluation of that, apparently. Um, I also would like to say there's a good example of how these maps uh, will, for, will, will probably um, uh, create a situation where, in fact, uh, you will continue with uh, tearing up uh, new fertile farmland in order to place industrial sites out on the west side of St. Joe County. Uh, I would like to see performance evaluation also of Bill Shalio's uh, work uh, spending $10 million and having nothing to show for it. So on those two issues related in, in some way to the maps, I urge you to, uh, to, do, to take those steps. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Just a point of clarification. The chamber is not responsible for generating business leads. They are responding to leads that we have been given. Just that point of clarification. Any other public comment from our friends online? Alexandra. 
Hi, um, thanks. Um, so I'm Alexandra Grove. I live out on the west side of South Bend near the new um, homeless hotel, just sort of like FYI. Um, I just wanted to say, I'm really excited that you guys passed these maps. I think that, or this map, I think it's really good. I certainly don't have anything in common with people down in Walkerton or out in New Carlisle. Really excited that we're gonna have, I'm gonna have my own commissioner in South Bend. I think it's great. Commissioner Dieter, I think you're phenomenal. So I'm so excited, like Mrs. Rylander, that you're gonna be our commissioner, hopefully um, at the next election or now or whenever that works. Um, but I just wanted to say that I would hate to see division in the county. I think that that would be awful. And I really hope that Commissioner Dieter, I hope that you help to bring people together and move forward and say, this is it, this is done. And now we can go forward and not worry about shoulda, couldas and wouldas because we need to move on. And I think that would be the best way to help us come back together and look at the good and the exciting about these maps instead of worry about what could have been done or should have been done or might've been done. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate your guys' work as commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from our friends online? Well, yeah, I guess anyone. I guess I should have said from anyone online, yes. All right, seeing none, a motion to recess is in order. So moved. Second. Having a motion in a second. Commissioner Dieter, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Fleming, how do you vote? Commissioner Aye. Fleming? Commissioner Dieter, Costelny, how do you vote? Aye. Thank you. We are recessed.